Hey everyone, Adam here. So uh, this is my apartment, actually not mine, it's my wife and our son's apartment as well. <clears throat> but uh, I just wanted to, um, I don't know, I wanted to take a quick tour of the apartment and show you uh, living in New York City. It's a one bedroom apartment and uh, I just want to show you what we've kind of done with it now and uh, some ideas of what we're thinking about doing in the future. Oh, there goes my crazy cat. So uh, again, we're not sure um, how long we're going to stay in this apartment. We were thinking about staying uh, at least another year. Um, <clears throat> we just found out they're doing an elevation, uh, elevator maintenance project or modernization project. And uh, apparently it's going to be very, very involved and it may impact us. We're pretty high up and uh, it may impact us. So <clears throat> not exactly sure what's going on with that, but apparently we are able to break our lease during that project because it's so intensive and uh, it's going to be at least three months. So at that point, we may decide to find another one bedroom. Not sure exactly what's going to go on, but um, anyway, uh, let's take a tour and uh, I'll explain more as we go along on the tour. Okay, so we start here. This is the kitchen. This is the gate that blocks our two-year-old from entering the kitchen. So we come on in here. As you can see, the uh, the hallway in the kitchen is pretty narrow, but um, for New York City apartments, it's actually fairly spacious because we have a full uh, stove, we have a microwave, it's pretty big, and we have pretty much a full-size refrigerator. A lot of the apartments my wife and I saw when we were uh, looking at this apartment three years ago did not have uh, nearly this big of a kitchen. A lot of people eat out in New York City and uh, some of the apartments were kind of adapted just to eating out and not a lot of space. So I like to cook a lot of my own food. Um, I really try to eat healthy or I've been attempting to eat much healthier uh, and because of that I like to cook up my own food because I like to know what exactly goes into it. So um, you know this is uh, this is the uh, the kitchen area, my my coffee supplies. I'll take you through a quick look through the cupboards, um, my son's stuff, our glasses, and um, so I will show you one project we were thinking about doing. So we have a lot of we have a lot of plastic uh, Tupperware type stuff for storage, and we probably don't need that much. Some of the tops and stuff are missing. It's just not ideal. We'd like to replace that with. Uh, uh, some of this Pyrex glass um, that we have that I have back here. Uh, basically, I have an idea of like getting like three six cup size plexiglass or Pyrex, sorry, Pyrex, and uh, maybe like uh, three four cup type sizes, and then just getting rid of um, all that plastic stuff. Uh, we're not going to do that until we decide if we're going at, probably after the elevator project just because if we are going to move that's just less stuff that we would have to take with us. We'd probably just donate that uh, plastic stuff before we moved and then once we got into our new place we would just purchase the, uh, the, the Pyrex glass. And here we just have food, cereal, um, stuff, nothing crazy. All right, so let's head back to the living room. So we're coming back into the living room. So this area right here, this is my wife's desk and her computer. This is kind of her quote unquote office. And then that's the printer. And then we have a small couch. Uh, back there we have a stroller. The cat is following me. He wants to say hi. Yes, I know you want pets. So then as we come here, we have this bookshelf here. Now, this has a ton of DVDs and Blu-rays. My wife and I don't watch that much TV. Honestly, what I'd love to do, and this will be a potential future project, I'd love to digitize all of this. Either rebuy it on Amazon Prime or Google Play or some kind of video store uh, and then just kind of digitize everything. Because imagine if all of this stuff can go. It would be fantastic. I like the bookshelf. May keep the bookshelf. Um, or or uh, uh, switch it out with one of the other bookshelves. But uh, the goal would be to get rid of all of these DVDs and Blu-rays and just digitize everything. 
things. So I need to look into that. I know there are some trade-offs with doing that. I have to do more research, but uh, that's a one to two year project. Like I'd like to have that complete in a year or two. Um, so I will update you on that if I ever get around to doing that. Come over here. Here we have a lot of my wife's books and some of my books. Uh, some of the books I do reference for uh, radiation therapy. I will look up stuff um, and, and utilize these books. But there's a couple of books in here, like I have a physics books that I never access at all. So I could probably go through and purge some of the stuff uh, for myself. And um, that'll be uh, that'll also be another project that I would like to do soon. Probably won't be able to get rid of that many books. Most of those are my wife's. So then we come to my area. This is my computer, uh, my laptop, and my desktop is uh, hidden behind there to kind of keep the toddler at bay and away from my desktop and laptop. And then we come here to the TV. Honestly, if the TV went, I'd probably just get a 32-inch. My wife and I don't watch that much TV. We don't watch TV at all. In fact, we just got rid of our TV uh, uh, stuff. Um, <clears throat> may do Netflix, maybe, and even that is kind of like, eh, we just we just don't have the time. Um, the stuff that we do watch is mostly for our son, so we'll throw in a Disney movie or whatever. And again, I'd love to digitize all of that stuff and then just access that through either uh, an Amazon Fire Stick or or some other means to watch stuff with my son that way. So uh, that's kind of in progress in the works. Um, I'll keep you posted. Uh, we haven't really done too much because we're just waiting for this uh, elevator uh, uh, modernization project to kick off just to see how onerous it's going to be. Um, that's kind of what's holding us back from, from doing a lot of these projects because we're just not sure yet. Anyway, moving along. Oh, the other thing I'll mention, I ha you'll notice I have a PS3. Uh, that dubs as our Blu-ray player. I don't really game with it uh, that much anymore, and I also have an Xbox 360, which I bought like six years ago. Again, I've moved all of my gaming. I still game. I just don't have as much time, uh, especially with a toddler. So I've moved all of my gaming to the computer side of things. Uh, it's more multifunctional because I can edit videos with it, I can do work, I can do a ton of other stuff, and then when I want a game, I can game. I just do that through a Steam account. Uh, I will never ever buy another console again just because um, I feel that with the PC, I can do a lot more uh, game-wise and it's more multifunctional. So if the Xbox 360 goes, I'm probably not going to replace it. Uh, in fact, I may even donate it. Um, that's another project I'm thinking about doing, uh, still in the process on that. The Xbox 360, once I digitize all of our stuff, our, our media, then um, I would be free, I would free up some of the stuff to be able to also get rid of the PS3. Because the thing that's holding us back on the PS3 is it dubs as a Blu-ray player, as I said, and uh, right now we play Blu-rays with it. So we'd have to find other ways to play our Blu-rays, such as digitally, then we can get rid of the PS3. Down here we have some of my son's toys. Now, my son has a lot of toys. Um, my wife and I don't, uh, we, we've cut it down to for like Christmas and, and for his birthday. He only gets one toy from us. The, so a majority of this stuff has actually come from the grandparents, uh, friends and family. Uh, they just really, really like getting Cedric stuff. And so it just accumulates. Um, I would like to go through and kind of maybe purge some of this stuff. Uh, I'll need my wife's permission in order to do that. Um, but, uh, you know. It's, uh, it is what it is with the toy situation at the moment. Um, but what we would like to do, so right now we have a small couch and our son is getting bigger and he likes to sit with us and it's very, very hard to fit three people on this couch. So what we would like to do is we would like to get a bigger couch. We may keep this couch and then just make room for maybe another futon. So, for example, all of this stuff down here could go. And if we could remove another bookshelf, we could easily slide all of that stuff maybe over on this side. Because all of this stuff from his little toy vacuum cleaner and over can all be put away and cleaned up. And once we do that, then we would have space for another uh, futon type couch. So we get a futon, it would probably sit three, we'd also have the small couch, and what would be really really great is if we got a really good futon mattress, that could dub as flex sleeping space. And I'll explain more as we go into 
the uh, bedroom here. Oh, actually first, before we do that, let me show you the bathroom. Nothing crazy in here, just a standard bathroom. It's small, which I like. No point in wasting space on a bathroom. We have the shower, we have the toilet with our special little toddler lock, and our sink, and that's all that's really needed in the bathroom. Nothing crazy, nothing special about the bathroom. So, as we come into the bedroom, as you can see, here's uh, here's my wife's cat, the, the skinny cat, who is not supposed to be up here, but she is up here, don't tell my wife. She's on the changing table. Anyway, as we move into the bedroom, you can see this is where our son sleeps. He is in our crib. Honestly, uh, probably around uh, 2 or 3 a.m., he wants to go into our bed. Uh, it's kind of hard to deny him that just because we are kind of cohabitating in the exact same bedroom. And that is kind of the push towards maybe getting the futon because then my wife and I can sleep out there and then my son would kind of just adopt this room and again it would be kind of flex space. So then my wife and I could choose where we wanted to sleep. Do we want to sleep in the bedroom or do we want to sleep in the living room and we would have more space in the living room to actually sit down with our son and more seating space which is something that we're finding that we're actually needing uh, at the moment so as you come in now you can see my laundry basket uh, this is our bed uh, and then uh, my dresser and then as we go through this is my wife's dresser over here and then some stuffed animals some books the cat is on the move and then as we come through more books for our son so um yeah that's that's uh what we're thinking about doing basically uh clearing up some space and adding an additional futon uh rearranging my desk maybe moving that and uh purging a whole bunch of stuff basically we want to make this work for another uh, one to three years potentially uh, potentially even longer uh, the uh, rent is so crazy expensive in new york city that basically we're attempting to live uh, in a one bedroom apartment for as long as possible i mean heck even if we had another kid in here like let's say we decided to have another kid uh, i i i think we could make it work especially if we got the futon in the living room so um, I mean, I guess the, the point of this video is just to make it inspirational that right now we're a three family, uh, three person family. Um, I do think we could do this with the four person family, although that would be p potentially pushing it slightly, but I think it's achievable. I think that that's a, a very lofty goal. You just have to be creative in, in where you put stuff and how you put stuff. So, um, to all the people out there that have like 1,500 square feet or 2,000 square feet and you're complaining and you don't have enough space, uh, I hope this video is inspirational in that um, uh, you can you can make it work. And uh, honestly, like when I watch some of the 400 square foot mini homes or whatever, uh, granted I usually don't see uh, kids in there, but still that is still inspirational because it's like, wow, look at what these people did with that much space. So. Um, again, it's just, uh, uh, especially in New York City where rent is so expensive, um, it, uh, it really pays to kind of do this uh, micro living. So anyway, hopefully you found this video enjoyable and uh, hopefully you like the tour of the New York City apartments. And if I have updates um, like along the way, because we start purging stuff or we add a futon and, and you know, the elevator modernization project uh, isn't too bad and we end up staying here, I will definitely post uh, uh, an updated video with how we've kind of transformed this apartment. So this is kind of the baseline where we are now and we can only make improvements from here. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you later.